Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of facial rigging for beginners. In this one, we are going to use deformers in Maya to add movement to the eyebrow region. So let's begin. Now, before we basically attach the eyebrows and the hair geometry to the face, we would like to have realistic movement for the skin. So once the skin moves, then we can easily wrap the form the eyebrows to the geometry that we have underneath. So with that, I can actually go to front view and let's observe the geometry that we have or the number of faces that we have underneath the eyebrow so realistically if you move the eyebrows it really doesn't really matter if the character is a stylized character or a realistic character i would assume that these faces will move as soon as you move the eyebrows so with that i'm just going to go to vertices now once you get those vertices selected i can easily go to the rigging menu set go to deform and make use of a lattice. Now a lattice allows you to have a boundary around the selected areas and freeform the translation of the selected vertices. So if I go into lattice and reset the settings, so mine matches yours, you can see you can create a division or some sort of a boundary around the selected in, um, vertices and just move the components of that free form boundary and as a result of that move the selected components. Now in order to get that to work we need to make sure that the lattice itself and the base of the lattice are grouped and the offset is the one that creates the deformation. So we want to make sure that this is enabled. Also, I tend to freeze the geometry and then you go apply. Now, just like any other components in Maya, you can right click and get into lattice points. And as soon as I select them with the move tool, you can see I'm now enabled to move the skin underneath the eyebrows. To get a better picture, I'm just going to hide the eyebrows temporarily and just focus on the lattice. Now you can see now I can easily select both ends and actually move the skin. But wouldn't that be better if we have more divisions? So we have better control over the overall deformation. Well, that's very easy. All you need to do is just to select your lattice and go and select your FDD, which is Freeform Deformation Lattice, and add divisions here. So for the length, I would like to have a good control over the parts of the eyebrows. And for the division for the depth and height, probably something like four will get the job done. Now look, if I, for example, select these two rows instead, probably I need to deselect the joint selection. If I were to select these two, look at that. We can have really nice control over the deformation of our skin. I can even select a row and rotate it and move it up. And that's how you sculpt it. So this is really nice, an easy way to create emotions and expressions without adding any joints. Now you may have noticed, for example, if I go over here, you can see the deformation can be a little bit too sharp, uh, for lack of a better word, and you have control over this. So let's actually select these rows and I'm going to tap S to set a key. I'm going to go to frame 10 move this up and press S to set a key. And I tend to exaggerate a little bit just to get a better understanding of the deformation that I'm getting. Now with that selected, if I go to FDD1 and 
influence, local influence, that's the softness or the smoothness of the deformation. If I increase it to something like four, you can instantly see I'm smoothing the deformation. If I increase it up to six, it's even smoother. So that is actually something that I would like to have. And this will get applied to the entire ladder. So I don't need to go and do it on every single point. Now, if I go over here, select these three again, I can just get rid of the keyframe. I don't want to have that anymore. And pretty much that is it. So I'm going to very quickly rename this. So FFD brow underscore GRP. And I'm going to just copy the name brow. And I'm going to call this FFD brow FFD base brow. Now, the question is, do we need to keyframe the lattice every time we want to have an expression? Well, you need to have or introduce a middleman or a middle person. And that middle person is going to be a cluster. So if I go to the former and in here, find cluster. The good thing about cluster, you can select a bunch of vertices and connect them to the cluster. When you move the cluster, the selected points will move with it. What does that mean exactly? This means that I can just right click, go to lattice, select these points and go to the former cluster option box. I tend to work with relative mode because if you don't use relative mode, you'll be getting additive deformation and the result is not going to be as good. So make sure relative mode is on. I'm going to move this one down and you go apply. Now all of a sudden I'm getting a cluster. And if I move the cluster, I move those selected points with it. So I don't need to really worry about my selection. With that, I'm going to undo. So I'm probably going to have this row as one cluster, these two rows as one cluster, and the end as one cluster. Also, I can have the middle one as a cluster and repeat the same thing for the other side. So that should really give me comprehensive and thorough control over the expression of the eyebrow. So I can name this one A, I can name this one B, name this one C. This one is probably center and then do the same thing for the other side. So R, A, R, B and R, C. And later on, I can just hook those clusters to a control, move the control that moves the cluster. When I move the cluster, it moves the lattice. Very cool. So let's get started. So I'm going to select the lattice, right click lattice point, I'm going to select the first row with the relative mode selected, I'm going to go apply cluster. Now we know how to name this L browse zero one, probably I'm going to copy the name. And now this cluster, if I were to select W and move it, you can see that moves the selected points. Select the two rows apply. That's going to be, uh, you can call the first one A01. And this one is going to be B01. Select the name, go to the last row. And select that, apply. That's going to be C01. I can have one for the center. So these two, and I can go apply cluster, browse center and then repeat that for the other side. Fantastic. Now look, if I were to select these two, I can easily move them. I can select all three. Later on, I can actually connect them to a control curve and I'm pretty much done. Now, Let's uh, get to the organization and clean up a little.
Now to clean up this freeform deformation goes to the upper jaw. So I can select the group node, enable the joint selection, click on the upper jaw and press the P key. Now look, if I move the upper jaw, you can see the deformer follows. I'm going to select all the clusters, group them. So it's going to be cluster brow GRP. And that's if you've been following my tutorial, that's pretty much how I approach the naming convention. I'm going to select the upper jaw again and press the P key. Now, if I select the upper jaw, you can see I can easily move. And hopefully, if you were to select any of these clusters, trying my best to select the cluster, you can see the deformation looks correct as well. Excellent. I'm going to bring the jaw back to the original rotation value. Now let's talk about how to have more refined control over the weights and the influence of the cluster and the lattice. Now to tweak the influence, the amount of influence, we need to find the cluster set. So if I select the cluster here and move it around, you can see it may be a little bit destructive if, if you're not careful about the position of the cluster. And the reason is the cluster has got way too much influence. So I need to find it in my outliner. And uh, with that, the easiest way to, or the fastest way to find the naming is why the channel box, I'm going to copy the name, make sure I'm going here, select by name and paste the name here. And I now have it selected. With that, you go to deformer and you go edit membership tool. Now edit membership tool gives you an idea at how many points are influencing or having an influence on the geometry. If I go to the wireframe by pressing four, you can easily hold down control and say, well, I don't want the bottom row to have that amount of influence. And that can easily remove the unwanted influence. Now I have noticed that I actually had a bit of an offset here. So that's better. I undo and then remove the influence. You can do the same thing for the other side of the bra. So you can see I'm selecting um, cluster A's on both sides and trying to get rid of the last row of the influence. Now, if I switch back to wireframe on shaded now, now if I try to select one of these brows, W, you can see that bottom row is not going to be moved. And as a result of that, I'm not getting that destructive movement. Very cool. That's how you actually tweak the influence on your deformer. Another way of doing this is through the lattice itself, which is actually quite interesting. So if you select the geometry and go to deform, set membership tool, option box, and if you select your freeform deformation, here's all the points that your freeform deformation lattice is having an impact on. If I go to the wireframe on shaded, you can see, for example, these bottom rows may not be necessary to receive influence from my cluster. So with the remove selected, I'm going to hold down B drag to kind of reduce the size of my brush. And with the remove selected and FFD one selected, I can actually go ahead and remove the influence. Simple as that. So the lattice is no longer have an influence on the nose here or top of the nose here. So areas close to Pesiris, we really don't need to have harsh deformation and that really should do the trick. So if I were to select the center one and move it up and down, you can see before that probably we may have had a nasty folding here. Now we don't have it. 
thanks to the set membership tool, we no longer receive any unusual and probably too much influence. So that's basically how you set and tweak and polish the influence from your deformer onto the skin of the geometry. Now, based on your character, you may add points or you may want to remove points, but basically these tools are available to you to get a much better result. Let's wrap it up here. I'm going to probably go to show and hide the deformers. And that gives us a much cleaner view. In the next video, we'll learn how to set up controls for characters neck and head bone. See you in the next one.